right, welcome to another edition of Talk Nerdy to Me. I have a very prolific voice actress on the line with me. You've probably heard her voice in video games, anime, film, and even audiobook. But you probably recognize her mostly as Miss Joke from My Hero Academia. It's Amber Lee Connors. Welcome to the show. Yeah, yay! Thank you for having me. <laughs> Can you walk us through the, a, a day in the recording booth uh, for doing an anime? Yeah, sure. So, um, usually, like, um, especially, like, nowadays, like, uh, for, for anime, like, depending on if there are auditions or not, for, uh, sometimes you show up and you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what character you are, um, you just, you just come in and the director's like, hey, we're doing this show, this is what it's about, this is you, and you're like, all right, great. So, it's, um, very much having to, like, just come up with, like, voices, like, on the fly, um, and then, like, you get, you get into the booth, and um, for, for anime, we have a process on call, like, on um, ADR. And um, basically, like, you'll have headphones, and you'll have, like, two monitors in front of you. One will have the footage of the show, and the other will be the script. And um, you'll preview um, it line by line, and then you'll have, like, these beeps. So it'll go, like, beep, beep, beep. And then where the fourth imaginary beep is is where you would start talking. So you'll usually preview it um, in Japanese first with the beep system, and then you'll come in. Um, in English to do the performance. And sometimes, if you're lucky, actors will have already recorded before you, and you can, like, play off of them, but other times, it's like you're kind of, like, recording into a vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> um, so having a good director is really important, so they can, like, kind of look at the big picture and, like, direct you from there what's going to work for the scene. But, yeah, it's, like, it's super fun and, and super challenging. <laughs> uh, how hard is it to match up the mouth flaps on the uh, the dubs? Um, it's, it can be pretty difficult, like, um, depending, like, on the animation style and on um, how those types of flaps are. Sometimes you get more, like, generic flaps that just kind of, like, open and close. Definitely, like, um, nicer animation is more specific mouth movements. So um, it depends on that mixed with how the script is written. Um, because if it's more specific mouth movements and you have, like, an E sound where, like, in, like a, a closed mouth would be or something, it's not really... It'll, it could be weird. <laughs> so um, there's, like, a lot of factors that come into it, but um, matching flaps and, like, ADR is also a technical skill. So, like, the more you do, the better you get at it. And it, it, kind of, it gets easier. <laughs> so that's the good news. <laughs> so how does that differ from doing audiobooks where you're just reading from the page? Yeah, it's it's completely different. It's a completely different beast because you can really read at whatever pace you want for audiobooks. You can take your time when you want. You can speed up. You don't have to worry about like matching timing or pre-existing like mouth movements or even what like the characters look like because um, while they have like descriptors, you can kind of with audiobooks you can like put your own spin on it and you know people are using their imagination. Anyway, so if anything, your voice is like more of an anchor to like kind of picture that character too. <laughs> you are the founder of Sound Cadence Studios. Um, can you tell us what what goes on there? What services they provide? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, we do a lot of um, different projects. So we um, we do dubbing for anime, for video games. Um, we do um, recording for prelay shows like Ruby, um, some of our properties, and um, Epithet Erased, which recently came out. Um, we also uh, do like script localization, like um, audio mastering, um, uh, demos, like, all, all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a few screenwriter and casting director credits. Um, is that a lot? I mean, that's the other side of the booth. How much different is that from? giving voice to the characters. Yeah, um, it's like, like you said, it's like the other side of the goal. So like, I feel like it gives you a really well-rounded picture. Because um, usually, like, when you're in the booth as an actor, and you're just like, OK, like, I only know, like, what the director's telling me, and, like, what, like, like my character, and, like, the script, and whatnot. But when you're on the other side, and you're a director, you have to kind of um, keep in mind, like, the full picture of the project, whatever it may be. And then um, with working with actors, like, being um, a director who's also an actor, like, I feel like I can communicate more clearly and be like, oh, like, you know, if you have any more energy on that, like, change your character motivation, or, you know, give me more, hey, girl, you on that line. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas um, if somebody hasn't, like, acted before and they're trying to direct an actor, they might be giving directions that are more like, oh, give me more table with a side of orange. And the actor's <laughs> like, how do I interpret that? <laughs> so, um, 
I feel it definitely helps with um, the collaborating because um, I'm a very strong proponent of like directing and acting, like being collaboration between the actor, the director, and the engineer being like a team process. Um, and then also just like having like the full picture in mind, be like, okay, like this needs to be like said this way because of the response to this character who's like not recorded yet. <laughs> so there's a lot, there's a lot more, um, I feel you get like the full, the full details when, when you've done both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it does help you to be a better, better on both sides, actually. Yeah, absolutely. It's like great because like I get to see a bunch of really talented actors work and be like, oh my gosh, like, that's what they do. Or, like, you know, I get to see that and like work with them. And then also just um, not like be in my own head about stuff. Like if like the director's like, hey, like do that again. It's not always because like the delivery was like bad. It's just like sometimes that's just what the project needs for people who aren't recorded yet. <laughs> <laughs> you also are a big proponent of cosplaying. And I know you like to cosplay some of your own characters. Can you tell me if you're working on a cosplay for any of your current characters now? Yes, I want to I wanna make one for Miss Joke. Um, it's, I, I haven't had time, but um, that's the <laughs> next one that's on my list. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> do you do a lot of the pieces yourself at home? Um, yeah, I usually uh, make them um, from, from scratch or um, like sometimes like I'll buy like pre-existing pieces of like articles of clothing and I'll modify them. It just depends on like what it is and like what is like the most time efficient way to go about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you were able to be in any licensed uh, movie, anime, TV series, whatever, what would you pick? I would love to be in anything um, Final Fantasy related, anything Game of Thrones related, anything Lord of the Rings related. I love Lord of the Rings. I just really want to be an elf. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, it's not, it hasn't been dubbed yet, but um, I would love to be in Sinar. That's what I'm saying. That's one of my favorite shows ever. <laughs> oh, so if they're looking and listening to this, uh, maybe they can give you a call. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any upcoming work that you can tell us about that's not covered under an NDA? Um, as of right now, I think everything's like been uh, that I can talk about has been out. So um, if you haven't played Borderlands 3, please play that. I played the female psycho in it, and it was amazing, and it's so much fun. Um, and then as for like um, stuff, um, I have directed um, Actor Songs Connections finale just um, came out, which was um, a final dub for Funimation that we did at Song Hayden's. So um, please, please check it out. There's lots of good beans. And then we dubbed all the songs for broadcast. So that's also really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have, I know you're busy, so I just have one more question. It's, uh, it's more of a serious toned question. And um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to pose it to you right away. And the question right. is cake or pie? <sighs> See, it's, it's really hard. <laughs> um, well, I, I'm really sensitive to sweets, so I think I'll skip on the cake and go with the pie because there's like a lot of fruit-based pies, and those are real good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite fruit pie? Um, I like a peach peach cobbler. Is that is that correct? Like, I like peach pie. Peach pie is good. <laughs> <laughs> we will accept that. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you for uh, talking with us today, chatting, and answering our silly questions and let you know yeah, that we absolutely. are looking forward to seeing you in April at El Paso Comic Con. Oh, I can't wait to see you guys in April, too. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or e? What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.